It's the NFC Championship game, and the road to a Super Bowl goes through San Francisco. It's the Vikings and the reigning Super Bowl champs on Sunday night. It was a frequent sight in the 80s and 90s, and it's continued on till today. Playoff football in the Bay Area as we welcome you to Levi's Stadium in Santa Clara. Coming up, a battle to represent the NFC in this year's Super Bowl, and we've got a potential classic in store as it'll be the Minnesota Vikings taking on the San Francisco 49ers. Hello everyone, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. The postseason continuing here on EA Sports, and man, it is electric in here, and it should be conference championship time. I don't know about you, but my butterflies in my stomach, they have iron wings in this one. <laughs> and every... teams will represent the NFC in the Super Bowl in two weeks time which will it be as we're underway in the NFC title game and we will not see a run back on the opening kickoff this will be a touchback so here's the first drive now for the 49ers and leading them out is their fifth year quarterback and we can talk all we want about football being a team game and leaning on different parts and aspects in order to get it done and that's entirely true during the regular season. Some weeks it's the defense, the special teams running the football. But in the playoffs, all the pressure reverts to the quarterback, and he has to play well and play a really high level in order for his team to win. Marcus Davenport from his outside linebacker spot, forcing the sack for a loss of eight. So an early wake-up call there leads to a quick second and long. Purdy. Marcus Davenport, his second sack of the night. Well, someone came to play today. Oh, there's no doubt about it. We heard about it all week, didn't we? Especially when we visited practice. He thought he had a good matchup in front of him, and he's taking full advantage right now. A miserable start here on their opening drive as they come up on a third and very long. Purdy now to throw. Oh, this will be incomplete. The rush gets home just as he was letting that go. That could have been worse. Instead, it's fourth down. Here comes the 49ers punter now. And no room for air here as his first punt comes from deep in his own end zone. And he's able to get it out of there. And this is a pretty good kick. And he'll take it just outside the 40. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. And they'll be let out by their quarterback now in his third season in the league. And you'd think as a young QB, there'd be some nerves leading an offense out to start a game, but haven't seen any sign of them right now. And speaking with him earlier this week, sense that the pressure wouldn't get to him. He feels comfortable being the face of this offense and shouldering the expectations on game day, even if he doesn't quite have the years of experience other quarterbacks do. Here's second and ten. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Holding offense. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. He'll look to throw. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. So five yards here, five on the play. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Tall task ahead of him here, needing a full 15 yards to move the chains. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. 
Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalposts, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. And the job becomes twice as difficult now after the sack. It's second and 20. First carry of the game for Christian McCaffrey. And now off to the races down the right side. Off to the races, Christian McCaffrey. Touchdown, 49ers! Christian McCaffrey in even 90 yards. And the Niners have struck first in this NFC title game. You get in a second and long situation down here in the red zone, I'd say most defensive coaches would think pass. Let's bring some pressure. So this is kind of a tendency breaker here to hit him with something on the ground, and he'll take it all the way into the end zone. Jake Moody now for the point after. And the 49ers grab a 7 to nothing lead. So two plays on that scoring drive. That's how they drew it up. And the long run into the end zone, and what a run it was. And Williams going to sit on this one. It'll be a touchback. The Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? But you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. I don't find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands and maybe the offensive move a little bit. Sometimes it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That too. <laughs> now a play fake here on first down sliding out of the pocket fighting his way through contact and this turns into a nice gain with a slide at the end no one there to help out downfield but no problem scrambling for 22 and a first this early in the game it's all about making steady progress downfield hoping to lead to early points and you can do it with your actual play calls or sometimes something a little more improvised as we just saw there so from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 34. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now for getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. Temporarily out of field goal range now as they come up on a second and long after the holding call. Back to throw here. Looking for his running back, and he's got it. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that's going to lead to a third and 11. Backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And in the run-up to this championship game, so much was made about how would this offense hold up on the road in a hostile environment? Well, that's not the definitive answer, but what a great first answer from them, that big play right there. Again, he'll drop to throw. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. From three yards out. And the Vikings are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. Well, that's just how they drew it up, CD. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, got to give him credit, found the perfect play call, 
Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free, and his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. Extra point splits the uprights, and we are tied at seven. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. The drive will start at the 25-yard line here as Rodgers will not return it. Out on the field now, here come the 49ers. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out, looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills. And looking for Kittle, but it's intercepted. Picked by Cameron Bynum. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. Well, that's a drive killer right there. Not a really confident throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs, and it's going to come down the hands of the wrong team. And now out comes Minnesota. They'll have very good starting field position here as they try to break our tie, and they start first and 10. And he'll get it down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. They'll look to throw. And it's caught. Touchdown, Vikings. Jordan Addison, an 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Vikings have taken the lead. Well, on that connection, it looked like they maybe had some pre-play communication. Maybe one of them noticed an area that was open to the defense to get the pass to. When you put the time in, sometimes you have that great silent communication that you just noticed right there because the best quarterback receiver combos in the NFL, they know how to make those adjustments at the line of scrimmage when they see something pre-play, and they got it done there. Extra point right down the middle, and that makes the score 14-7. to they had the short field, and they made quick work of it. Just two plays to get into the end zone. Bringing it out of his end zone, Isaiah Rodgers. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down officially at the 21. There the 49ers getting set to trot out there. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive, because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back. But make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. Uh, it's been a long season, but he still looks fresh running the football. He knows his guys are one game away from the Super Bowl, so he's going to give it all he's got, and that's a heck of a run right there. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. Up the gut, McCaffrey. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Officially nothing on that one, no gain. So they're left with still 10 to go on third down. Here's Purdy. And this is going to be incomplete. Rocky started throwing the football. He's missed now on his first four attempts. I'm eager to see what his demeanor is going to be from this point forward because the best ones, they missed the first 15 attempts and they think they're going to hit the next 15. Let's see if he has that type of an attitude. That's a 49-yard punt, eight though on the return. And it will be Vikings ball first and 10. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he maneuvers up the middle for three, and it's second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. 
They'll drop to throw. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Haven't met a corner that's worked himself yet that ever admits to worrying about man coverage. How about the play there, breaking that pass up? So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. Six-yard return after a punt of 48. And the Niners will go on offense. First and 10. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line. First and 10 at their own 26. They'll try and start this drive in the air. The first catch of the game for George Kittle. So give them five yards there on the pitch and catch. And it'll be second down. Brings up second and five at the 31-yard line. Now a draw play to McCaffrey. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Now, during that run, an injury here. We got one of those big blockers in some discomfort. But the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. Purdy to throw it on first down. Connects with Kittle underneath. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. It's a pickup of 12. Second play in a row with a 12-yard gain. From Viking territory now. They'll come up first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Purdy completes this one here to McCaffrey. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Through one quarter, 14-7, our score. The 49ers with the football here to begin the second quarter. Now second and five, as they've got it as we resume action. Purdy looking to throw. He finds Douglas complete. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 27-yard line. McCaffrey running up the middle. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right of the yard. Out of the gun, Purdy. That's over the middle and caught by Ayu. And the Niners are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. Seems as if the passing attack starting to heat up a little bit here in the second quarter. You can sense and you can see the momentum because now they're reading their patterns downfield, they're understanding the coverages, and they're finding the open holes in the defense. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. It's a game of yard. Henry is not going to get a whole lot, maybe a yard down to the three. And we're going to stop play here at least momentarily. It looks like there is a 49er who's in some discomfort. Well, hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, are going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. They'll look to throw on third and goal. That'll be caught by Iowa. Touchdown for the Niners. Touchdown pass, and the 49ers are an extra point away from drawing level. And in the red zone, I guess this is why you have a guy like that on your roster. Without a doubt, and if you have him, you use him because he's a guy who's going to win just about every time. I don't care what the coverage is. Extra point try now for Moody. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. A 10-play drive that time. And it was Brandon Ayu capping it off with a touchdown reception. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And Williams going to sit on this one. It'll be a touchback. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. And the Niners get there and bring him down. Blowing that play up, Roquan Smith. 
Smith as he gets the sack. Well, that's what they have to do more defensively, not just getting sacks. They have to keep getting in his face, not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carving him up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Looking to throw. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Now they'll run on the ball. And this effort will not get it done. He stopped well short of the first down at the 29. It'll be a pickup of 13, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. And here's Ryan right now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. And he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. putting the books as a 53-yard punt. And the 49ers will take over deep in their own territory. Brock Purdy in the offense back out there. The last series, the ball never hit the ground. 6-6, six six, touchdown pass, so whatever he did then, do it again, right? Yeah, it reminds me a lot of when I watched the best quarterbacks throw 7-on-7, seven seven, or even routes versus air. They're accurate. The receivers catch it. The ball never touches the ground. Or if you want to take it to basketball, a well-executed fast break, right? Pass, 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 finish at the rim, basket. Yeah, the ball never hits the ground there either. And he'll be about a full yard shy of the 20 at the 19-yard line. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. A solid run by Derrick Henry, and here's another first and 10. Back to throw, Purdy. That ball caught, Brandon Ayuk. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. He'll get 17 on that one, and the Niners have a first down. And he's turning in a nice performance. Remember, he had the touchdown earlier, and this time he's able to beat double coverage to grab it. I think that if he weren't worried about a taunting penalty, he'd run by the opposing team's bench and say, guys, two's not going to be enough. You better get some more guys trying to cover me. He knows how to get open downfield. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. Purdy so complete here to Ayuk. It'll go as a gain of four, and it'll be second down. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. On second down, here's Henry. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. Well, we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. Gets this one to use check. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. Good yardage after the catch. Is that play good for 30 and a first? Well, big plays have been a hallmark of this offense all season, so there was no reason to think that it wouldn't continue here in this title game. Obviously, the magnitude of the event, not getting to them early. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Back to the ground now. It's Henry. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. It's a pickup of three, and we have now arrived at the two-minute warning. Seven yards left for second down. Ball at the 10. Now Purdy. And it's complete. In the end zone, touchdown for the Niners. Tarnell Mooney from 10 yards out. And the Niners.
Bulls go coast to coast and finish the drive off with six points. Well, that's about as quick of a passing touchdown as you'll ever see right there. Everyone has a section in their playbook called the quick game. That was a super quick game. Out of the hands of the thrower, bam, right to the receiver, successfully for a touchdown. How in-depth is that quick game part of the playbook? It's pretty in-depth because people want the ball in the hands of the quarterback into the playmaker's hands downfield as fast as possible. There are a lot of plays, a lot of options involved with that. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. From the end zone, here comes Williams. And they're going to start in a hole as he's brought down at the 11th. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. They'll look for a drive to tie this up, down 21-14 as they have it first and 10. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. He gets it to Addison. So the completion good for six yards, and it's second down. Now back to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Back to throw again. He lets one go deep for Addison. And now a fumble. The ball's out. And now this is scooped up by the 49ers. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. So the big game through the air, but scratch it all off because he could not hang on to the football. And you have to like what they did on defense here. They didn't give up on the play. Big yardage given up, but they still battled all the way to the end and helped force a turnover. Out comes Christian McCaffrey with the rest of the offense. He's already cruised past the 100-yard mark. We haven't even gone away for halftime yet. He might not want halftime. <laughs> all right, why cool off? Really keep everybody here. <laughs> let's stay out on the field and keep going. But all that being said, everything is really working well for them. The play calling's been excellent. The blocking's been terrific. And obviously his vision and legs have hurtled him to this big number so far. We could be seeing something really special here. And we'll see how much they give him the ball here. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Complete. Jefferson the target. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as it comes with 22 seconds to go here in half number one. Now here's a handoff out of the gun. He will push his way down to about the 14. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts. They'll set up a throw. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. And he's unable to haul it in. So it falls incomplete over the middle third of the field. And that brings up fourth. And his kick is indeed good. And that'll bring him back within four. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal, you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. And with only nine seconds remaining, with well, not much time, we'll see how they play this. Henry on first down, not finding much running room as he pushes forward for a yard or two at most. So we've reached halftime here in the NFC Championship. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. All right, Brandon, thanks. As always, what half remains in the battle to see who will take home that George Hallis Trophy and represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. We'll get back to you guys in just a moment. But first, let's look back to the AFC Championship game held earlier today. And it is the Houston Texans are heading to the Super Bowl as they await the winner of this NFC Championship game. We saw a fine performance in the first half from the former Mr. Irrelevant, Brock Purdy. He came on after a slow start to fire two second quarter touchdown passes and give his guys the lead 
at the intermission. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Hallis Trophy still hangs in the balance as the second half now underway in the NFC Championship game. And Williams going to sit on this one. It'll be a touchback. But the Vikings offense set to go to work to begin this third quarter. And they have work to do in this second half if they want to earn that berth to the Super Bowl. And I'm pretty sure this is where their coaches at halftime were saying don't panic and then demonstrating it by not making a lot of drastic changes to the game plan. Let's just get back to doing what we've been doing all year long. That should be more than good enough. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. He'll look to throw, and that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now he brings up third down. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. They'll get 10 there, but it leaves him just short for fourth down. And here's Ryan right now. He's been terrific so far. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half. We've got a close game. Offense has played well, but right now, they've got to keep their foot on the gas. And that carries with it an extra bit of pressure, doesn't it? As much fun as they're having right now, they're locked in, really clicking on all cylinders. They also know that if they ever miss a chance to put points on the board, they've actually put their team in jeopardy. And that's not how you want to play the game. It's supposed to be complimentary football, offense, defense. But today, it's all offense for them. Yeah, they've been playing with a sense of urgency. It's probably going to need to continue. Throwing on second down, it's Purdy. It gets by him, and now a little daylight. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. The result, only four yards there on the play. And they'll be faced with a third and inches. Play action, now Purdy. He's got his target, that's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Great way to convert on third down there, 21 yards the play. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get... And these guys have been taking advantage so far. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Purdy. Got a man, that's how you... And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. Then they'll run it here. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 41. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. On third down, it's Purdy. The Vikings after it, and they get there for the sack. Multiple defenders getting to him there for a huge loss. This is a little hard for me to compute because I'm watching sack after sack happen, but somehow they're still behind in the game. I would expect all of this defensive pressure to translate to them taking a lead, and thus far, it hasn't happened. Time's winding down. They don't want to waste this type of performance from these ace pass rushers. Here comes the 49ers punter now as he's on here to punt it away. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for 
is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. They'll look to throw. DeAndre Hopkins making the catch. And he'll be out of bounds right at the 40. And this is good for a first down, his second grab of this NFC Championship bout. He'll drop to throw. And just not enough on the throw there. Down around his feet and incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. A really nice gain of 25 yards. All right, say it with me now. There's a lot of different words we come up with. Maybe we go back and forth after that play, getting his toes tapped down to make that catch. Crafty? Yep. Wiley? Oh, definitely. All the veteran names? You name it. Has every move in the book and continued to get better throughout his career so he can make that type of a catch. That's complete once again to Hopkins. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Now well, into a sea of defenders and intercepted. Picked off by Roquan Smith. And the Niners are going to take over at their own 28-yard line. And that could turn out to be a giant play, Charles. You've got an offense driving to take the lead, but they're turned away on the INT. And I think that we might look back on this in the fourth quarter and say, that was the play of the game. The 49ers ready to set up shop again offensively. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still they've got the lead here and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. And give him six yards here as he's stopped near the 35 at the 34. And from the 34, here's second and four. as he's past the 35 to the 38-yard line. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. Here comes the 49ers punter now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Fair catch called for and collected right at the 10-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Vikings will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. They'll start on the ground here on first down, and it maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secure before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. Drop to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Second and nine now. That one into the hands 
of Hopkins downfield. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. That one good for 26 and a first down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. We're in the third quarter of the NFC title game. This is second and ten. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. Man open left side, it's Williams. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. One quarter remains until the NFC crowns its champion. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now here in Santa Clara. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. They'll look to throw again. And down he goes. The 49ers get there. The pressure from multiple guys there as they bury him for a big nine-yard loss. I know nowadays they give a lot of guys different things when they get to the sidelines after creating a big play, but just don't cape on this guy because he single-handedly ended multiple drives. Interception earlier, sack on third down. Really should have a better game plan and stuff how to contain him because he's affecting this game in so many ways. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. The Niners set to take over on offense. And right now, they're just looking for a little more cushion, trying to make this a two-score game. Points here would go a long way, obviously, to propelling them into the next round. And this is where the head coach, offensive coordinator, they've had to set a tone all year long about what they do on offense. So most teams want to stay in attack mode, but you have to do it with some bit of caution, don't you? Because you can't come away with no points. You need these points here in order to feel a lot better about where they are in this game. But this, well, he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. The previous play, they barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Now they pick up over 30 yards. We know play calls can be very creative in this game today, but sometimes when they've got receivers with speed like this, they don't need to design incredibly complex calls. Sometimes it's just get the ball in his hands and let him do his thing. In a sense, less can become more, and it was right there. On first down, Purdy. I see the surprise in the face there, Carter. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Purdy to throw again on second and ten. And this will be caught by Mooney. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 31-yard line. A new set of downs after a strong pickup of 16 yards. Play action, and now here's Purdy to throw it. This is caught. Touchdown! are closing in on a Super Bowl berth now as they extend their fourth quarter lead. Well, that's certainly going to bump up the old win probability index because now it's a two-score game here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you're taking me into that deep water now. Win probability index. This game's definitely not over. We're not looking at a half percent or something. It's just two scores. But the way that this team has played, to me, what I've seen, they absolutely deserve to win this game. They've been the better team by far throughout. Moody good with the extra point. And that pushes the lead up to 11. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. From the end zone, here comes Williams. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. 
And they are in need of points here, no doubt about that, with a Super Bowl berth on the line and trailing here in the fourth quarter. This possession, gigantic. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Oh, that's into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Asante Samuel Jr. And he'll take this down inside the 15-yard line. And they'll take possession already in the red zone and in a great spot to add points to the scoreboard. And, Brandon, how many times have we seen a defense with a lot of field behind them get even more aggressive, right? They feel like they've got them not pinned down, but in a favorable spot for them. And they took advantage of it there. Got a nice interception and set up their offense in great shape. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Tenth carry now for Derrick Henry. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, San Francisco. Derrick Henry taking it in from 14 yards. And the 49ers continue to show why it pays to play at home in the postseason as they add on to their lead. Well, something about this team, you just felt like they were one of destiny all season long, and they made themselves today, as you can see, the class of the NFC. Yeah, and it's starting to look more and more like a Super Bowl trip is very much in their future. And the fans starting to book those tickets. Moody good with the extra point. And the lead is up to 18 now. A nice tidy little drive there. Getting the ball in excellent field position. And only one play to score it. And Williams going to sit on this one. It'll be a touchback. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. And their dream of a Super Bowl berth so close three quarters ago. But obviously starting to slip away if it hasn't already. They need points here and in a hurry. Over the middle and complete to Addison. He's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Looking to throw. This is caught by Williams. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. He'll get 15 and a Vikings first down. They'll look to throw here. And he's going to be intercepted for the third time thus far. Picked up by Diamador Lenore. And he'll get this back across the midfield, striping down to the 47-yard line. Well, offensively, Charles, hard to put a silver lining on this one. No secret that they had to take chances with a score where it is, and it leads to a turnover. I love how you paint the picture, partner, because you're exactly right about that one. Look at the empty stairs on that sideline. This is one of those games where you just want to go crawl under a rock until it's over. And San Francisco gets set to go here. And after the interception, they are sitting in an even better spot with the ball and a comfortable fourth quarter lead. A first down carry for Henry. Cameron Sample there to make the play defensively. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. 62 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. And that's the kind of run you get when you know Super Bowl birth is in sight. They've got the lead. It's the second half. All those weeks of wear and tear in your body just go away. He's running with purpose now. And that's a heck of a run. They try and run on first down, but to no avail. Tackled for a two-yard loss in the backfield. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. Now this time they'll throw it. Here's Purdy. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away. And now it's third. And this offense on third down today, three for seven so far in this game. This is third down and 12. Back to throw, Purdy. And he is caught. And this is going to 
to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 19. Give them 18 on the play. They're looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. Purdy to throw it on first down. And he hauls it in in the end zone. Touchdown, San Francisco. Jarnell Mooney with his second touchdown of the night. And the 49ers are able to add on to that lead. Boy, he has been fun to watch throwing the football in this one. It's certainly not fun for that defense, though, Charles. Now up to four touchdown passes in this ball game. Yeah, we're supposed to be neutral, but I'm feeling their pain right now because he has absolutely carved up this secondary. A clinic on how to attack a defense and take them out of the game. Moody good with the extra point. And they open the lead up now to 25. And Williams going to sit on this one. It'll be a touchback. And now out comes Minnesota. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, it's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. He'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. But no reason not to try it there. And they do indeed convert on fourth. And the Vikings... Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off by Asante Samuel Jr. And they take over. They'll set up shot at the 46-yard line. This spot in the fourth quarter with that deficit had to throw the football. Unfortunately, there's the risk of big turnover. And you know you're going to be throwing against nickel, dime, all sorts of exotic defenses, but you have to do it anyway. Ordinarily, you might want to run the football a little bit, try and get them out of it. But as you noted, this time of the game, this point on the clock, had to throw it. Henry up the middle. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leads him with two to go on second down. I like it. I like the call. Still an opportunity to run the football and chew up a little more time off the clock. Henry again on second down. And trying to push forward, but he is going to be stuffed up in the backfield. Two yards the loss, and now they go from second and two to a tough third and four. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. And the busy night for Henry continues. Trying to keep those big legs churning, but he's going to go down in the backfield. The defense stiffens to force fourth down following that first down gain of eight. And they get to hoist the Hallis Trophy. Unbelievable victory moving on to the Super Bowl. I only hope that these players understand exactly who is behind that trophy. George S. Hallis, one of the creators of this great game of football of ours and creator of the NFL. What an amazing feeling and an amazing accomplishment. And that does it for the conference championship.